When all I see is a battle You see my victory When all I see is a mountain You see a mountain move And as I walk through the shadows Your love surrounds me There's nothing to fear now For I am safe with you So when I fight I'll fight on my knees With my hands lifted I Oh God The battle belongs to you And every fear I lay at your feet I sing through the night Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And if you are for me, who can be against me? Yeah. For Jesus says nothing impossible. You see the beauty We know I see is a cross God you see the empty tomb yeah. So when I fight I fight on my knees With my hands lifted I Oh God the battle belongs to and every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the night Oh God, the battle belongs to you Almighty Fortress And Almighty Fortress You go before us Nothing can stand against the power of our God Shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God and Almighty Fortress. You go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Yeah. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I sing through the night. Oh God. Battle belongs to you. When I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Good morning, good morning, church. I don't know about y'all, but I think Sam lost a battle with a hair curler this week. Uh, you know, he had summer camp this week, and he had cornrows put in his hair. All the ladies in the house, can y'all go, ow, ow, right? Um, no, he had a great time at camp, and uh, they were limitless this week and just had an awesome time in the Lord. Many decisions for Christ, which is awesome. We're glad that y'all came to church this morning on this hot Sunday morning in can y'all believe it's like, it's almost August already, right? The kids are like, no, it's not. No, it's not. August is not close. Don't even talk about that, Pastor. Be quiet. No, um, we're just excited because this week is Vacation Bible School. 
We are going to have an awesome time this week because we've got about at least 30 kids coming, a lot of neighborhood kids that don't have church homes that are going to be with us. Um, we're going to just celebrate with them and have an awesome time with twists and turns um, just with all of our kids this week. And uh, if y'all, y'all would please be praying for us uh, because this is just a huge opportunity for us to tell people about Jesus and for families to be changed and transformed because of the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And all the twists and turns that we have in life, we have Jesus that changes everything. Amen? So what that means today for us is this. If you're on site with us, um, we don't have to put anything away, whoop, whoop, which is awesome. Um, but we do have to put all of our decorations in. So we've got to decorate this place for Vacation Bible School. So if you want to stick around and help us pull in all of our stuff, it's going to be right after service. And then Monday through Wednesday this week, the kids will be here from 6 to 8. If you're a volunteer working this week in all of our various ways, you need to be here by 515 so that we can get everything together and be ready to get started right at 6 with our rallies. So we're really looking forward to that. The only other announcement that I have for you is uh, coming up on July the 29th. We have two things. In the morning, there's a family festival that we're going to be a part of at the um, fairgrounds. And uh, it's going to be a place where we give away free backpacks and supplies for school. We're going to be able to tell people about our church here. Um, this is a citywide um, that Staples is sponsoring, and we're just going to be a part of it. We'll have a booth there, all that kind of stuff. It'll be at the fairgrounds that morning on Saturday, July 29th uh, from 10 to 3 if you want to be there. Sam's going to play some music, um, just introducing people to our church, a lot of things like that. We'll have water to hang out, hand out to everybody and just have a good time. But that night, then we're going to have game night, all right? So um, over at Chad Shock's house. Um, Chad's right there, wave right there, if you don't know Chad. Um, we're going to be at Chad's house. We're going to have a good time. Spaghetti dinner? Mmm, that's what I'm talking about. I love me some spaghetti. So y'all coming out and enjoy that with us. Um, the address is on your uh, newsletter that you read. If you don't have this newsletter, uh, but you'd like to do it, it's online. All you have to do is text Ace News to 904-441-6701. Um, but uh, if you're a guest with us here today or online, we'd love to get to know you. And the way that we get to know you is you text ACE Connect, all one word, uh, to 904-441-6701. So that way we can, if you have prayer requests, if God's doing something in your life that you want to share with us, or if you have questions about our church, we would love to know how um, we can come alongside of you and pray through you in that regard. So other than that, get one of these newsletters as you leave today or go online to Ace News and get that through online. We're going to sing some more. Um, we're going to just praise the Lord. So let's go ahead and stand and let's continue to worship our God. There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There is another in the fire Standing next to me There is another in the water Holding back the sea And should I ever need remind Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears no burden There's a to me There is another in the fire All my debts left for dead beneath the waters Sing this like you mean it I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore Isn't that true? 
Should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning? Either way, I won't bow to the things of this world. Yeah. And I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire standing next to me. There is another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need a reminder? Of a power set me free There is a grave that holds nobody And that power is in me There is another in the fire oh, There is another in the fire oh, There is another in the fire Oh, and I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him. I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between where I stand. I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls gave in. Nothing stands between. Us. Nothing stands between us. Oh, nothing. Sing this with me. There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come with me in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. Yeah. And I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire. Standing next to me, there'll be another in the waters, holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminded how good you've been to me, I'll count the joy from every battle, cause I know that's where you'll be. I'll count the joy from every battle. Cause I know that's where you'll be One more I'll count the joys come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Son of God In all his innocence He walked in the dirt With you and me He knows what living is He's acquainted with our grief A man is our son Of suffering and oh, blood and tears, how can it be? And there's a God who weeps, and there's a God who bleeds. And oh, praise the one who would reach for me. And hallelujah to the Son of Son. Some imagine you as distant and removed, but 
Would you chase me down in merciful pursuit To the sinner you would grace And the broken you embrace And in the end the proof is in your wounds Yes, in the end the proof is in your no blood and tears How can it be There's a God who weeps There's a God who bleeds And oh praise the one Who would reach for me And hallelujah To the Son of Son this part it's just talking about Jesus and everything he did for us and how much that meant so I just want to I'll sing it and I want y'all to try to sing it as fast as possible like, try to learn it and sing it because it's just so powerful your cross my freedom your stripes my healing all praise King Jesus Glory to God in heaven, your blood still speaking, your love still reaching, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God forever, your cross, my freedom, your stripes, my healing, all praise. To God in heaven, your blood is still reeking, your love is still reaching, all praise, King Jesus, and glory to God forever, your cross and my freedom, your stripes on my healing, all praise, King Jesus. Glory to God in heaven, your blood is still speaking, your love is still reaching, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God forever, and glory to God God forever, and glory to God forever. Blood and tears, and oh blood and tears, and how can it be? And there's a God who weeps, and there's a God who bleeds. And oh, praise the one who would reach for me. And hallelujah to the sun of suffering. And hallelujah to the sun of suffering. Sing that with me one more time. And hallelujah to the sun of suffering. How powerful is that, that Jesus was 100% man and 100% God, and everything that we feel and everything that we struggle with, Jesus had to struggle with too, while still being perfect. I think that's just something that was reminding me at camp, and something that I really, really puts on my heart to make me want to do better and follow the Lord even closer, just because if he could do it, we should strive to be like him because we're human just like he was human. Good morning, Ace. It is a beautiful day. It's wonderful being in the house of the Lord. 
If we have children here from PK25, you can head that way. We got something special planned for you today through fifth grade, pre-K through fifth grade. <coughs> Love them and leave them. <laughs> it's a wonderful day. Uh, I, I'm asked to uh, do a couple things this morning. First is uh, the offertory prayer after I turn loose the kids. And then uh, after that, uh, we're going to have a, a special speaker today. Pastor Don Cambridge is here with us. He's going to bring the message to us, uh, fresh off a mountaintop experience. <laughs> so we're looking forward to hearing what he has to say. Uh, as we pray this morning for our offertory, I want, to remember, want you to remember that the offertory prayer and the offering is part of worship. It's not just like paying your electric bill or your mortgage payment. This is a worship. This is how we return to God a portion of what he's given to us. And we're thankful for that opportunity. You can do it multiple ways. You can write a check and drop it in the tithe box there. You can go to Ace Give at 904-441-6701 and give that way. I use push pay. So that's the easiest way to do it. And uh, I encourage you to give, give freely, give lovingly, give worshipfully. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day and we thank you for this time that we can gather together and worship you. Lord, we pray that as we offer up our tithes and our offerings and our time and talent and resources, Lord, that you will use them to benefit your work in this community and around the world, Lord. I pray that as we offer this up, that you would touch our hearts, help us to know that we are in your will. Lord, we pray all these things in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. Good morning. I had to find my own stand. <laughs> Dug around back there, found something. Let's go over here a little bit. Yeah, I got this... Uh, little rash going on. I don't know if you can see that. It, <laughs> I got both. Yeah, it's usually developed, uh, I have a, a need for, for uh, chocolate. And whenever I have a need for chocolate, it, uh, it starts showing. So I make sure that I, that I eat that. Or is it because I'm eating too much chocolate? I, I, I can't seem to recall. So, uh, hey, well, there's a couple guests here that came this morning, you mean a lot to me, uh, part of my extended community, and just love you guys. I mean, I just love gathering together anyway. Uh, man, I wish church could go on all day, but we just have other things we got to get to, and church isn't like it used to be, where you go down the street and all in one little community, but that's okay. We do it uh, the way that we got to do it, and you know, I'll, I'll just say at the onset, I appreciate Pastor Mason giving me the opportunity to speak to you, but I, I got to admit, uh, I think he would like to include me a little bit more often, but I'll, but I'll tell you, this isn't my, my primary gift. It, it's not. I, I, I do better at being a, a pain in his side. That's, that's my, primary, <laughs> my primary gift. Uh, but I feel weakest in uh, moments like this, and uh, I actually... Had a whole lot more confidence being on the mountain, you know, trying to climb it. Uh, but I think, I think when uh, we feel weakest, he's strongest. And I think Moses can relate to that. I think so many of us can relate to that. I think I am going to go to this table. <laughs> because this is sort of kind of crooked at this point. But, you know, I, I thought and I saw it and I prayed a lot about this message and... Uh, I always end up feeling like it's going to be a little bit difficult because uh, there's some things that God's speaking to my heart about, and if he's speaking to me, then I, I want to say that he's saying it to all of us because it's his word and it, it's very palpable, uh, some of the truth that you come to realize that, you know, maybe you haven't thought about before or see a new perspective on so today, uh, as in the theme that's been going on for Independence Day, very clever to call it Independence 
on the Lord. Uh, so today we're covering independence on Jesus for community. And uh, I'll be going through my notes here a little bit. So when I think about community, when I think about our life as, as, as brothers and sisters, uh, you know, there's so many things we depend on, you know, whether it's reaching out to someone else, helping someone else, coming to church, but it also includes, and I think we forget this sometimes, it includes being a community. And the way that it happens is we're surrounding ourselves with Jesus and we're surrounded around him and that's the, the glue that kind of keeps us together, isn't it? So I don't think we should gloss over this whole thing of community. I don't think we realize just how important it is for us to be a community, to be a family, and for the world to see us as a community and a family. And some things we just take for granted after we've been a, a Christian for long enough. Did you know some of the mercies that we enjoy that bring this joy into our heart that just overflows in us? It's hard to describe as we have justification from the penalty of sin, adoption in Jesus, uh, placed under grace and not law. Grace, given the Holy Spirit, as you sense in this place, promise of help in all affliction. It's how I'm able to reach out to my friend who's battling uh, cancer right now, that even though they don't maybe go to church as much as they should or at all, boy, they sure took comfort in knowing that we're going to be praying for them and their affliction. Assurance of a standing in God's election, you know, kind of set apart to, to be his hands and feet here on this earth. Confidence of coming glory. No matter what's happening in your life someday, you're going to be in his presence in that glory. Confidence of no separation from the love of God. No separation from the love of God. I felt it on that mountain. Confidence in God's continued faithfulness. So we're especially dependent on the Lord for community. And it's by his grace that it's happening. It just doesn't happen by any means. It's by his grace that he even wants us to be together. We don't deserve it. But sometimes it can feel like work. It can feel like work getting together. I mean, it's like adult daycare. You know, I got to function and I got to do stuff for people and church means, you know, it's high stress and uh, so many people and uh, I come out worn out and uh, shouldn't feel that way. Shouldn't feel that way at all. And I think our dependency in this love that Jesus has to give us grace of community is... Uh, Maybe when it starts feeling really hard and overwhelming, we're kind of taking over. Like, I'll be the community for you, Lord. I've got this. And we kind of push him out of the way because we didn't kind of settle into our weakness of not knowing how to be that and not knowing how to change our schedules to meet it. So we just start, of, start losing that sense of, of, of joy and overflowing in a sense of community because there's so much for us to do. But remember what the Lord said in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So being a community depends on his strength and his power. And it's not our own. So I like to put it this way. Whatever you're having a hard time with in your Christian walk, and whether it be ministering to others, going on a mission trip, wondering how much time you can devote, uh, how much you should read the Bible, and you feel like you're kind of taking over to do a good job for God, exhale. Exhale into it. <sighs> Lord, take over. I can't do it all. I don't know what to do. Just carry me. 
bring me into what it is you would have me do to be more like you, to live out this life that you've called me to live. So once we're surrendered and we're dependent on the Lord in this way, like community, we can't help but be a community. If you have nothing else on your mind and you have nowhere else to be, you'll find yourself in the presence of Lord, of the Lord with others. Uh, because when that joy is overflowing inside you and the you, Lord is speaking to you and, and uh, you just feel his love, you naturally want to be around others. And you notice when you're in this worship service that outside there you felt a certain way and inside here you felt a certain way. And when you started gathering and started worshiping, you can't say that you didn't have something washing over you that felt like an increase in joy and love and trust and peace. And uh, we shouldn't take that for granted. And we should exhale into that as much as possible to be this community that is so important to the body of, of Christ for us to be members of. 2 Corinthians 2.15 says... For we are to God the pleasing of Roma, of Christ, among those who are being saved. So you are the sweet aroma to God. Uh, for we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved. And I would say I don't really feel that way, that I don't think uh, anybody else sees me w that way. But there's something that's happening, and it's at a spiritual level, and this is a spiritual aroma that you can't see it, but it is happening, and, and God is so pleased with you as a living sacrifice, and we'll get to that here in a minute, that you have presented yourself that way to be fully devoted to him, to come as you are, to be used fully of him. He's just so proud to call you his son and daughter. And uh, this, whatever is pleasing smell to you, like, oh, man, that's great. That's how he feels about us, and especially feels about us when he sees us gathering. And so why are we better together and thrive? You know, I think it's beautiful we can be on our own doing our thing, but it's because what we have in common is amplified. That aroma is amplified. A whole room full of people that know the Lord is aroma amplified. A whole church full is amplified. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And that's all of them. Those good works, there's hard good works and there's easy good works. Walking in all of these works is uh, something that we can and should do. And walking in community is an easy good work if you don't see it as a hard good work and you don't try to take over and you allow the Lord to put you together in various places and times. But you know, as soon as you walk out the doors of a church, you can't say that you don't start just trying to navigate the secular world alone. It's just you and the Lord. You're out there, you get back to your busy schedule, you're doing things, and I get it. You know, we have kids, we have health issues, we have relatives that need something, and uh, a work schedule, we have to pay bills. I get it. And, uh, but it does feel like it's just us and the Lord out there because we're not that tight village community that all lives around each other. And that's a beautiful thing. Just you and Jesus is a beautiful, beautiful thing. But it's not f fulfilling the call to fellowship and community. It's not. And as long as the world is driving by all these empty churches and half-filled churches, that's what they're seeing. They're not seeing a full house of aroma. They might see a few cars here and there. 
but it matters a great deal whether we realize it or not. One of the easiest things we can do is to get together, and uh, it's one of those easy good works. So community is good. We can't deny that, uh, and, I, and I can't stress enough how I feel one way with the Lord, and it's, it's, it's very uh, individual, and it's intimate, and all these things, but man, when I'm in the presence of other believers that we know we have something in, in common this way, there's a different kind of joy and uh, peace that I have, and it's like being in this place. You know, there's this trust and uh, this togetherness. So uh, Romans 15, 13 reinforces this point by saying, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. So that's amplified when we're all together, all together. I remember the days when I was a lot younger and had less things on my plate, uh, feeling really filled uh, by the Holy Spirit being in community. Uh, it's like a, a craving I had. It wasn't, TV didn't do it, and boating didn't do it, and, uh, you know, uh, riding my bike didn't do it. It's like I craved being around other believers. And this is much younger when I was college age years, and I had Monday through Sunday available at certain hours to, to do whatever. I didn't have kids and all this. But just to illustrate a point... Uh, when we do sort out the things that we must do and the things that we can do and should do and the other time is available for just fellowshipping with the Lord and with your fellow believers uh, your time is best spent doing that and I remember uh, on Tuesday nights me and a couple guys used to get together and we would go to a restaurant and we would laugh and have coffee and a piece of chocolate meringue pie or something like that and people all around us said what is that joy all about you know and they'd see us praying over our meal I mean, these are making big big impressions whether we realize it or not it's that aroma you know that's going forth and on Wednesday nights I would meet with uh, a Wednesday night group and we would do you know Bible study and just laugh and have such a good time and man you just didn't want the, the night to end then on Thursday nights we would get together and uh, I remember my friends and I we would all gather at a parking lot and uh, no one would park because we were going somewhere else so we'd just start this circle and it's like we're doing this big circle round and round till all the cars would gather we're all being goofy waving at each other and then we'd be off going to where we were going to fellowship next and of course there were going to picnics and all the rest and meeting up uh, on Sunday uh, for a whole day of whatever it was that we were doing. So I remember my life being really filled with community, but life kind of got busier and some of that went away. But I imagine many people were affected by seeing us as community, and it certainly built up my faith in having so much counsel and uh, accountability uh, and the Lord knows what you're going through so there happens to be people around you that can discern that and are there just the right times for just the right reasons so community happens when we surrender we surrender we rest and depend on Jesus for it enjoy each other it's enjoying each other it's not all about our mission is to go across the street and make sure all these uh, people are uh, going to heaven. Uh, and if, if you just look at it like that, then I guess you're in charge. But, you know, one of the big things that attracts people to the Lord and to uh, our way is the real joy and the real happiness and the real fun and uh, the real compassion and the real love they see in the people that are doing it. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says, Now you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. So, yeah, we're all individual Christians, but we're all member 
of one body. And uh, I don't know if you saw the picture that Mason put up on Facebook. I don't know how you got that picture. I'm talking about community. He puts a picture of me in a diving environment uh, with a dive sign behind me. And then it dawned on me. It's so I could tell you this, that uh, I kind of saw myself underwater, you know, diving, like scuba diving, and had a bunch of friends and all of you diving and scuba diving with me, you know, where we have the scuba tanks on. And that's us living in that holy environment that you can't breathe ordinary air. That's holy God air that that's the only way we're surviving is that uh, he's graced us with being allowed to be in his presence. And that body of water is us being surrounded by the Holy Spirit and it's in and through us and we're connected all into it. Like being underwater. We are all members of this great ocean of, of God's love. And what he is saying to do, right, as a community is to live, eat, work, and minister together. I know that's true because uh, if you look at all the stories of the Bible, it seems like they're all together doing that quite a bit. For in him we live and move and have our being. Acts 17.28. And good works are easy to do when they're easy to do. Matthew 11.30 says, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Man, I, I, I apply that to some things in my life and that doesn't seem true. Uh, like standing up here, like I said, this isn't my primary thing. It, it doesn't feel light sometimes and it, it doesn't feel easy. But I exhale into it and uh, I know he's got it. So I'm fine that way. But easy to do are things that are your natural gifting and your natural instinct is to gather with other believers. And uh, so those are the things that we can do and we should do in dependence on the Lord. It should be anyway, simply love others by living out, enjoying your salvation. The good news, the good news. There's nothing else you can do. It's all been done for you. Yes, and in your life, he's going to use you to spread his message and to bring others to himself. But it's so important to not feel like you're proving anything anymore and you're earning something that if the Lord came tomorrow and people see you, like have no fear of anything happening to them, that... I have the Holy Spirit. I'm alive. Amen. I have it in me, and I don't know how to explain it to you, but I can tell you about it, and maybe you can have it too, and you'll, you'll feel what I feel, and you will know the Lord is good. And that's the good news. So enjoying our salvation. And we can do that together in community. It doesn't have to be a big program. It can just be... Man, I just love the Lord, and I know you do too. Let's get together. And we were just over at uh, Mia's and Rolando's, uh, invited over to their home. And, you know, the conversation, we talked about this, that, and eating. And we uh, ended up, the Bible started opening up and us speaking. And, uh, you know, we weren't trying to do anything but just be together and around each other and of course the Lord is in the center of our hearts so he became the center of conversation and man it really left me so much more filled and I left there thankful and blessed for having been invited so I live in a neighborhood that's not too far from the main campus of Anastasia and uh, every now and then you run into neighbors that also go to Anastasia and We'll be talking and some other neighbor will come by. And oh, what you talking about? Oh, we're talking about church, you know. You should really check it out. It's great. And, uh, and uh, they'll say, you know, I've heard that. Everybody I hear says that, you know. And so uh, a lot of people go and try it. And uh, that's really an easy work, isn't it? It's easy. You've just invited somebody to be saved and to have what you have. 
in many ways by just naturally saying what blesses you and to go try it. But, you know, this appreciation and enjoy of salvation and uh, thinking on that, meditating on that, uh, it also should be balanced with the other part of our, our spirit that should be balanced in, in looking for others and, and having compassion on others and looking for the Lord to draw and move you to doing some of the hard good works. And uh, for some, for me, compassion is an easier good work, but for some, it's not. Uh, uh, I, I'd say that relative to standing up here, <laughs> but, uh, but it can sometimes hurt, you know, and so it makes it a hard work. I don't want to be around hurt. I don't know what to do for them, Lord. I don't, I don't know, and this is that moment that you have to exhale into it. You're at your weakest, and sometimes like that, you just have to remain your weakest part of yourself and just be present, but I'm getting into something very specific here. Yes, there are the lost. They do not know the Lord. And we will seek them out, and we will share the gospel with them. Uh, Brother Asa and Lydia are here. They are great evangelical evan, evan, uh, evangelists, and uh, it comes somewhat naturally to them, or maybe they worked at it really hard, but they're pretty comfortable with it. And uh, I'm so, we're so blessed to have those that are out on the front lines doing that. I, there's another gentleman by the name of Al Kador. I don't know if you know him, but he teaches evangelism and you go through a course at the church. And uh, man, he has no problem going up to anybody at any time and tell them all about the Lord. And, uh, you know, if I can climb a mountain, you'd think I could do that. But man, he can really do that. I mean, we were in an elevator going up to a senior citizen's top floor and uh, we hit the button, there was someone else in there, and he said, we're going up. Do you know where you're going? <laughs> and that started a conversation. And man, they got the gospel before they got out of that, that uh, elevator. So it's uh, very specific. So we definitely have a heart. People will be placed in our lives to minister to uh, in all kinds of ways to present the gospel to them and to uh, help them to know the Lord. But there's another lost people that we should have compassion for. And I don't think we think of it this way. But they are the other lost. They are all your brothers and sisters out there that are Christians but no longer go to church. There are thousands of them. Thousands and thousands and thousands. And they're all around you. And they're hurting. I've been in places in my life where I've gotten a bad taste for this that and the other and I can't find a good place so why even bother it just drains me anyway and I don't know I don't know if I like the message and uh, I just uh, you know but the Bible tells us that they're suffering and that they're in danger because they are not in fellowship with other believers and we know that when we gather that it's good for us and that uh, it, it's the uh, it's, it's, it's trusting and it's safe and it's, you know, the, the idea of, of wandering off is less likely when we're surrounded by, by other believers. So how are we supposed to love all of these other lost if they're not here and we don't see them? How are we supposed to discern what they need and to pray for them? It's, it's, it's a huge crisis, actually. So in 2 Corinthians 13, 11, it says, Finally, brothers, rejoice. Aim for restoration. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. The word says they are suffering because of lack of fellowship with you and sharing your joy in our community setting. And it doesn't have to just be church. It can be a picnic. It can be inviting over to the house. 
It can be many things, but there must be fellowship and there must be community and there must be uh, a coming together. Deny not the gathering together, right? I mean, there's not a whole lot of verses that talk about you must go to church because it was a given. <laughs> Everything, that's all they did all the time. Not as some in the habit of stopping uh, fellowship. And we know that it's not good for us. Ask anybody that's committed suicide. It certainly wasn't in community. They got less and less connected, more and more isolated. And guess who wants you there? Right? The devil wants you there. That's the best place he can get you. So you have a lot of Christian brothers and sisters out there that need to be back into fellowship. Now, I don't want to be a huge church here. I really don't. I think uh, a perfect number is somewhere between 5,000 and 8,000. <laughs> Probably more between 1 and 200. You know, as a pastor, you know, you only have so much time and people. I want to know people personally in every single way. So I don't want to be a huge church, but uh, as we depend on the Lord for our strength, this church has been doing this for six years. We want to be on another site someday. And sooner rather than later. You know, it makes for an environment where you don't have to break down. And you can be there on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever. Different events going on. The community sees you. It's a, it's a billboard to that aroma. And uh, so we are here. And it's in the Lord's time that when we do that, but I do know we can do an easy, good work. We are the hands and feet of the Lord. He is moving and having his being and evangelizing and, and comforting in many ways through the Holy Spirit that we cannot see. But in physical form, he is here in you and I. And he'd be walking those streets and talking to those people and, hey, do you have a church home? Man, you need to come and check it out. I'm not saying it's the, the greatest thing, you know, of all. But, man, we just love each other and we get together and uh, it's good for you. You need to, to be in fellowship with others. Please, please do that. You know, so we can be that and we can do that. And, uh, you know, in order to really serve the ones that will come that don't know the Lord at all, you know, we'll need all those gifts present. And there's all kinds of people that are sitting at home, not going to church anymore. And I know some of you that are sitting at home, there's reasons you can't. I get it. You know, whether it's, you know, your schedule or health reasons or uh, kids and all that. But I'll tell you what, the, the answer to community and church in today's society is not we've gone online okay maybe that's you know a subtle misconception or lie from uh, Satan as well you know getting everybody to convert over to that it's it doesn't compare yes you'll receive a blessing from it but he certainly wants us to be together and I think we can do the easy work the easy good work of running into everybody you see and not, you know, trying to, you know, put down their throat, you know, that you're a sinner and you're this, that, and the other. That, man, do you have a church home? We gather on Sundays and we gather and we have a men's group that gathers on. And we get free chicken wings. Mason brings them and, and chicken and, oh, he's over there. How are we doing on time, brother? Okay. I can't see that back there. We got 15? Five? Okay, we're down to five. We're down to five, people. Going to five. So we know we're supposed to be growing, and we know it, but America has stopped going to church. They have. So has Europe. You go there sometime. But uh, they stopped going because, like I said, it robs energy and all this stuff, right? Because they're doing it on their own strength. They didn't exhale into it. And Lord, just, I want to go there and I want to feel filled up on you. I mean, I can't carry the whole church, and I can't do everything for it, but man, I, I need that fellowship. I need to be around it. 
So this is the, the big point I want to make here. You know, Paul says, you got to be a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to the Lord. Present yourself. Don't be conformed to the world anymore. You know, it sounds like a, oh man, that's heavy. i got to be the sacrifice, saving everybody. But you know, he's talking to the Romans. The Roman church, which he's not there, but they are, and it's a city of a million. And there's believers, and there's Gentile believers, and there's uh, Jewish believers. Jewish believers had to go for five years because they got exiled. Then they come back. The Gentile believers were doing it a little bit different. And now you got this clash. And they're not doing it the way they want to do it. And, 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 and uh, so they're bickering and they're bitter. And they're becoming bitter Christians. You know any bitter Christians out there? You know, what, are they really enjoying their life? I don't think so. So Paul is, is saying, he's, he's uh, what's the word he uses? I appeal to you, brothers, and I'll say sisters. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters. Don't be conformed. Be living sacrifices, right? Did you know that word just doesn't work for us? Uh, that appeal word, it doesn't mean very much. But let me tell you what he's really saying. He's saying, I beg you, I beg you, I plead with you, I urge you, if I have to get on my hands and knees, don't go down this road. Don't be divided. Don't spend your time. Once you start, you can't stop. And it's never going to end. Once you begin this process, the beauty, the joy, and the love, and the best version of your Christian life is right here, right now, in just loving each other, being in fellowship, have some, some compassion for the ones that think a little bit different than you, and, and they you, and uh, be able to compromise a little, and uh, most importantly, love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength right here, right now. And I could, I could compare what he's saying when he opens this chapter. It's like when I went up to Everest and I'm at the top and uh, my, my guide runs into me and says, Don, you should go down now. I'm like, okay, yeah, let's go down. And so we go down. But what if he ran into me and I'm all blue-faced, staggering, and, you know, can't walk in their step and breathing real heavy, and I just keep going. And he says, oh, you should really come down. And I'm, ah, oh, my God, I'm going two hours that way. You know what he would do right then? He'd go, I beg you, I beg you, don't do this. You're going to die going that direction. You're going to die going that direction. Right now, stop. Come this direction. And you must do it. So that is the level of what he is saying at that, at that time. So it's a life or death situation, an appeal he is making, and if you go on, it, it, the chapter talks about the marks of a true Christian. It's about your gifts and working in and, 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 and in fellowship. So uh, I'll close with this. That living sacrifice, that living sacrifice doesn't mean what you think it means. It means just like Abraham was to sacrifice his son Isaac, right? He didn't think he was going to die. And if he did die, he knew he was going to be brought back to life. He, God had another uh, uh, sacrifice waiting that uh, surely he would, he, would, he would come to the rescue. And so, in fact, Isaac was a whole sacrifice, a living sacrifice, living, came to the altar alive, just like they brought the animals, they were alive. And in this instance, he's brought alive. And because he came to the altar completely exposed, completely surrendered, and willing for God to do anything to him, he continues to live. That aroma, that is the smell that God smells, that they surrendered that way, that they were willing to be anything and do anything. And so that living sacrifice, he's saying, Paul is saying, be a living sacrifice. Come completely surrendered. Don't worry about all this bitterness. Don't worry about all this other stuff. Let me work in your weakness and, and push and draw and build you as uh, 
a wonderful vessel for me. That by the time you come into my home of heaven, man, you'll see the things that you did you won't even believe you did. But you didn't keep going down that road of bitterness and not fellowshipping. So in that fellowship, stay in it. Don't buy what the world is selling and conforming to it. Yeah, so uh, as a soldier, I had a lot of bonding experience. You spend all night and day with people. And I'm saying for as a fellowship group, the stumbling block that we have is we get to a certain point of comfort with each other and then we stop. You need to become close and intimate and know each other's thoughts and know each other's reactions and actions, be able to discern what's going on in their life because that's really love and that's really family. And that's really community, and that's powerful aroma. Powerful aroma. There's a, a group called the Thebans Legion. Back in 285 AD, they were a legion brought from Egypt to Switzerland. They often brought legions somewhere else so they could be objective and get them far away from home. Well, this one was a Christian legion. And the, uh, the emperor at the time, Maxim, asked them to go and slaughter all these Christian villages. And they're like, no can't do that. I mean, you need to worship me. And they're like, no, not going to do that. And so he decimated them. He killed one, one-tenth of them at a time. So one out of every ten in that 6,000, he got 10% of them and he killed them to be as an example so they would change their ways. And uh, so they all put their name in a hat and the, you know, the centurions had to pull the names out and they would stand forward and Man, they were so strong in their faith and in their fellowship and in their community that their brothers had their back and they had glory and they didn't have a problem with that. And then, so the, the emperor keeps doing this and now this legion feels sorry for him. And so they write him a letter that says, emperor, and the emperor's thinking, yeah, I finally got him to write me a letter that uh, I'll spare them. And he's like, uh, dear emperor, we're Christian, and we thought that you kind of heard about us, and you should know how we act, what we do, and kind of our commitment. Uh, we're not going to do that ever. And this just blew the emperor's mind. And, and then he asked for all of the entire legion to be killed. And they just knelt down peacefully, and another legion had to do them in they're all crying and brothers were you know hugging each other and they're okay with that and I guess the only way I could describe how this legion felt about their faith and about how ridiculous it was for that emperor to think of that legion thinking anything different about how how much faith they had is if you were in this situation, and that was your letter, and you would say to the emperor, emperor, we, we can't do this, you know, uh, we know you're asking us to, to deny that the sun above, shining in the sky, does not exist, that it does not warm my face, that it does not light up the earth. That it does not move from one side of, of, of the earth to the other. You're asking us to deny that actually exists and that you actually don't see that? And you don't understand that? In all due respect, Emperor, you can't be serious, right? And that's how we should feel about our faith, and it grows in that kind of community. So, I think we're out of time, but uh, everything means everything. Being community is part of being the body of Christ, and we can grow. It's the easy work of growing, and we're told to grow, and there's so many of those out there that still need to uh, be re recommitted to a, a family of fellowship. As we uh, 
go into our invitation time. I'm going to ask Don to stay here up front with me. Um, one of the things, and Don, um, that I appreciate about Don is not only the fact that he just climbed Mount Everest, which is like, what? Um, but the fact that he is somebody that his words aren't just words. They're actually a lifestyle. And for my wife and I, um, we have connected. And just the other night, uh, we gathered together <laughs> with uh, Karen and Don for dinner. And I don't know about this, but have you ever tried to have fellowship and community with people and everything comes against you to keep you from doing that? Mm. Do you know that's exactly what the enemy is trying to do to church? Mm. To us gathering together as the body of Christ, that he's going to take every aspect and try to make it as hard as possible for not just to come on Sundays, for us to be church all week long. I almost fainted because I was feeling so bad. And then they got a call in the middle of the meal and they had to go and leave for that. But one of the things, and both Don and Karen, they've been to our house and we've had fellowship at our house together. We've had community out eating dinner. We have had community in other aspects on Wednesday nights with men's fellowship. Can we make a commitment this morning to say, and maybe you're online right now, can you get on the phone right now with another brother or sister in Christ and say, we're going to get together this week. We're going to have a meal together. We're going to pray together. We're going to actually be the church together. And we're going to see what God has for us to encourage each other in doing that. And by the way, those of you that are right here on site right now, you don't get off the hook because you're going to do that this morning. The invitation for you this morning is to be the community of Christ, to be the body of Christ. And some of you, you're sitting next to the people that you always sit next to. Some of you are sitting on your own. Some of you, we've gotten trained in a society now for the last three years to be separate. And not together. That there has been a, a place of trying to pull apart instead of gather together. Can we say no more? Can we make a commitment to say no more? That even if you do feel like, man, I'm just all by myself. I'm going to take the step to go over to that other person or to those other people. Or I'm going to be the person that goes over to that person that's by themselves and say, hey, we're together. We're community. We are part of the body of Christ. I might be a belly button, but I have the aroma of Christ. <laughs> Let's love on each other, all right? And so this invitation, as Sam sings, I'm gonna ask you to actually move and be a part of community. To move, to be next to, to gather and be close to, and then say, let's pray together. Let's pray for each other. Let's love each other as Christ loved us. I love the fact that when it comes to Don and when it comes to Karen and when it comes to their lifestyle of coming alongside of other people, that there is a place of them saying, you know what, we're not doing this by ourselves. And so let's do that this morning. Let's be a part of the body of Christ that says, no more apart. Let's be one. All right? So as Sam's singing the song, can you move? Can you get around some other believers in Christ? Can you come alongside and say, can we pray together? Let's pray for each other. And maybe this is something that God is saying, I've never taken that first step to say, I want to be a part of the body of Christ. That Christ is the head. That I've never surrendered my life to the head of the body of Christ. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, we'd also like to share with you what that means. Please text ACE Connect to 904 441 6701, and we want to share with you that relationship with Jesus.
because that's the first and foremost relationship that you have to have to be a part of the community. But for those of you that know Christ, just like Don talked about, there's hundreds if not thousands of people in this community that know Christ but are not a part of a body of Christ anymore physically. Let's pray for that. Let's pray that we would be a part of inviting them back and saying, hey, come and be a part. I'll love on you. Let's have dinner together. But let's let God be God and let's be a part of his community together. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for Don. Lord, we thank you for his example, Lord. Lord, we thank you for Karen. Lord, we ask that you would in this place today as we come together as a body of Christ, that Lord, that we would trust you, that we would be vulnerable enough to go and pray together, to ask God to take over, to make us one together again. Not sitting across from the room, not even in a place of where I'm never vulnerable enough to share my name with somebody else, or I'm never vulnerable enough to say, would you please pray for me? Because right now things are just hard. Lord, let us gather together and lift up one another in the name of Jesus. Because Lord, you take all things that are broken and you heal them all for your glory. And all God's people said, amen. As we stand, move to one another and let's pray for one another in this invitation. That is who you are 
That is who you are. 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 My God, that is who you are, yeah. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 